lift your hand to heaven everybody and begin to glorify the name of the most high god give him thanks give him praise give him all the glory that is due unto his name appreciate him celebrate him honor him father we give you thanks for the privilege we have to be in your presence we celebrate you you are worthy of all the praise of all the glory of all the honor and of all the adoration blessed be your holy name 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 you are worthy of all of the praise and of all of the glory thank you mighty god now begin to ask the lord to speak to you this morning in this covenant day of vengeance speak to me by your word this morning lord transform me set me free establish my liberty by your word today we give you the praise we give you the glory thank you mighty god in the name of the lord jesus we have prayed father we come before you today we are grateful for our access to your presence lord we are thankful for the blessing of being chosen and caused to approach unto you and this morning we are set again for an encounter with your word change our levels open new chapters to our destinies establish our testimonies in the name of the lord jesus christ and on this covenant day of vengeance let everyone's liberty be established arise O lord today and judge the wicked we give you the praise and the glory because we know it is done already in jesus precious name we have prayed somebody believe god say a loud amen give jesus a big hand and please you may be seated in his presence somebody shout glory in this great month that god has brought us into where we are encountering his power we shall be going on this teaching series engaging the ministry of the holy ghost for exploits engaging the ministry of the holy ghost for exploits it's important to begin by understanding the fact that we are redeemed for exploits in matthew chapter 5 verse 13 down to verse 15 the bible tells us that we are the light of the world we are the salt of the earth the bible tells us where a city set upon a hill that cannot be hidden those are all pictures of exploits what does exploits connote exploits connotes outstanding feats outstanding feats out of this world order of accomplishment unimaginable happenings those are all descriptions of exploits and the bible makes us to understand clearly that every one child of god is ordained by god to be a commander of exploits even more so the bible tells us that the least in the kingdom of god is greater than the greatest of all new testament old testament saints in matthew chapter 11 and verse 11 the bible said of all that are born of women there is not one reason that is greater than john he said but he that is least in the kingdom is greater than he in hebrews 11 34, 39 and 40 the bible said all of these having obtained a good report through faith they received not the promise he said why god having provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect according to scripture therefore it means that every redeemed child of god no matter what our beginning looks like we are ordained by potential to be greater than the greatest of all old testament saints that includes abraham it includes isaac 
it includes Jacob, it includes David, it includes Solomon, it includes the prophets. Every one of the Old Testament saints, no matter the height they attained, God said, you and I, in this dispensation of the new covenant, are ordained to be greater. I see you getting there in the name of Jesus. However, we are made to understand from scriptures that our golden destiny cannot be attained by might or by power. In the book of Zechariah chapter 4, beginning from verse 1, he said, I saw this picture of a golden candlestick and all of it was of gold. He said, and then the Lord spoke to me and said, Zerubbabel, it is not by power, neither is it by might. But what will it take? It is by my spirit, said the Lord. It means, therefore, that it will take the help of the Holy Spirit for the golden destiny of the saints to be realized. Therefore, we can uncover the fact that we are empowered by exploits, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We are empowered for exploits by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. A picture of this is painted in Isaiah chapter 45, beginning from verse 1. The Bible says, Thus said the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I've holding. And by that anointing, he said, I will subdue nations before him. I will loose the loins of kings. I will open before him the two leaf gates. He said, the gates shall not be shut. He said, I will go before thee. I will make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gate of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. He said, and I will give to thee the treasures of darkness, the hidden riches of secret places, that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by name, I am the God of Jacob. In other words, he said, that by the anointing I'm placing upon you, Cyrus, all of these things will begin to happen. And those things that happened in description there are simply pictures of exploits. By the unction of the Holy Ghost that will be coming upon you this month, I see you commanding exploits in the name of Jesus. But we are meant to understand from scriptures that the Holy Spirit is multidimensional. It is one spirit, yes, but various compartments to the same personality. And we must engage the various dimensions or compartments of the ministries of the Holy Spirit in order to experience the fullness of all God has for us in life and in destiny. Therefore, this morning, we are going to be looking at three specific areas or three ministries or dimensions of the Holy Ghost that we must invoke in order to see exploits commanded in life and destiny. And number one is the spirit of power. Say with me, the spirit of power say louder the spirit of power the holy spirit is referred to as the spirit of power it says in acts chapter 1 and verse 8 he said you shall receive power after the holy ghost comes luke chapter 24 and verse 49 it says also there he said that when i go and behold i will send unto you the promise of my father but tarry in jerusalem when he comes you will be endued with power so according to scriptures, we see very clearly that the Holy Spirit is referred to as the spirit of power. And it takes power to enjoy rulership. Psalm chapter 110, beginning from verse 1 to 3, he said, The Lord said unto my Lord, sit down at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. He said, the Lord shall send the rod of his strength out of Zion, rule down in the midst of thine enemies. He said, the people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauties of holiness, from the womb of the morning, thou hast the day of thy youth. So it takes power to enjoy rulership. If we are going to see our destiny as kingdom rulers being, you know, realized, then it will take the release of power. Shout hallelujah. And according to scriptures, no one can, anyone that cannot see his power cannot access his glory. The Bible said, to see thy power and thy glory. It takes power to access glory. 
psalm 63 and verse 2 to see thy power and thy glory so if you are going to enjoy glory if you are going to experience the glory of god in the life of any individual then it takes this ministry of the spirit of power from today and from this great month the spirit of god shall manifest practically in your life as the spirit of power I said it shall manifest practically in your life as the spirit of power i'm reminded about the testimony of one of us here he said he came down to church the covenant day of escape he had been tormented and afflicted a strange wicked bird will come into his room and begin to afflict them the first day he landed on his son that son died landed on the second son another day that son died landed on the pregnancy of the wife the wife lost the pregnancy and four pregnancies were lost like that they had another son and then later landed on the same son again that third son also died entered into the boss he bought for his business the boss burnt down to ground you know to ashes and then he came to that service he heard the word of god and he took the anointing and how many of us recognize the anointing as the spirit of god for after the anointing was poured upon david the spirit came upon him from that day forward he went home that evening and as he knelt down to pray again this evil and wicked and hateful bird came into the house entered into the kitchen he took the oil and began to anoint the house and as he was anointing the house he could hear commotion inside the kitchen as it were the bed staggering from side to side by the effect of power by the next morning the landlady whom he had been complaining to about his challenge the children came ran to him and said why do you want to kill our mother he said I'm, i have nothing to do with your mother by the next day that is two days after that anointing service that woman was gone they came and took him took him to the police station and said this man killed our mother he said tell the officer how i killed your mother they looked at the officer after trying to explain left right and center the sister of the woman rose and said when she started this fight i want her when she started this battle i want her i don't know where battles may come from but i know the power that will silence them and by the spirit of power today i see every battle silence in the name of jesus I see every battle silence in the name of Jesus. Every human effort to fight for themselves has a limit. Even a gun has a limit that you can shoot to. But when the Holy Ghost is involved, there is no distance. No matter where the source may be, a person can be standing here in Nigeria and crying out to God for the spirit of power to invoke on his behalf and down in Malaysia the Holy Ghost is striking on his behalf why because there is no distance unreachable by the Spirit of God again I decree that for every assaulter of your destiny by the oppression of the spirit of power they shall be silenced in the name of Jesus they shall be silenced in the name of jesus so the holy ghost is the spirit of power number two the holy spirit is the spirit of faith in second corinthians chapter 4 verse 13 he said we also having the same spirit of faith we have believed therefore we have spoken we have believed therefore we have spoken and we see all through the scriptures the manifestation of the spirit of faith in our speaking the bible says in acts chapter 14 and verse 3 long time abode they speaking boldly in the lord who gave testimony to the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands so signs and wonders are provoked by the speech of faith in in the book of isaiah chapter 30 and verse 15 we also see that enumerated there he said for thus said the lord the holy one of israel in returning and in rest shall ye be saved in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength so our strength is in our faith and the holy spirit is the spirit of faith i see the spirit of faith igniting his ministry afresh in your heart in the name of jesus 
in the book of proverbs chapter 28 and verse 1 the bible says that the wicked run it when no man pursueth, but the righteous is as bold as a lion in proverbs 30 verse 30 and verse 31 the bible said there are six things that go well here is seven he said one of them is a lion which is strongest among beasts and turneth not away from any that boldness of faith shall be shall come afresh upon you today in the name of jesus now what are some of the manifestations of the spirit of faith in the life of an individual number one the spirit of faith puts us in command of all things you are not subjected when the spirit of faith is at work in a man's life that man is in command mark chapter 10 and verse 27 the bible tells us there he said for with men this is impossible but with god all things are possible and in mark chapter 9 verse 23 he said all things are possible to him that believeth to him that believeth so when faith is at work the spirit of faith is at work you are in command of all things nothing is able to lord it over you nothing is able to hold you against your will you enter into the realm of supernatural command he said above all taking the shield of faith wherewith you will quench all the fiery darts of the enemy there is nothing that satan can throw that faith cannot handle faith therefore is a vital key to enjoying supernatural command number two the spirit of faith empowers us to believe all things not only does it empower our capacity to be in command but it empowers us to believe all things one of the individuals that operated in strange dimension of faith in scriptures was paul the apostle and the bible said concerning paul in acts chapter 24 and verse 14 he said but this i confess unto thee that after the way which they call heresy he said so worship i the god of my fathers believing all things believing all things it enlarges your capacity to believe there are things that god is ready to do but man's heart is not ready to receive yet the heart cannot accommodate the act that god wants to display so god is hindered from manifesting in that individual's direction because the heart cannot accommodate it but when faith comes alive and the spirit of faith enters a man's heart he believes the unbelievable he believes the unbelievable he believes all things without reservation shout hallelujah i see that spirit of faith coming afresh upon you in the name of jesus the capacity to believe the unbelievable in order to see the impossible delivered let it be released upon you in the name of jesus you find the spirit of faith enabling a man to believe things that are unthinkable unimaginable unfathomable by reason of the largeness of the heart that has been enabled by the spirit of god i see that becoming your experience in the name of the lord jesus christ the Lord spoke to his servant and said to him, he said, September 18, 1999, he said, the tabernacle shall be dedicated. This is a tabernacle that was not yet completely designed. No picture of exactly what it will look like. Yet on the 8th, 17th of September, 1998, God was speaking that. And he was saying that from a church building that was 3,000 seater, speaking of a 50,000 seat building. But when the spirit of faith is at work in a man's life, he is not afraid to confront the unimaginable why because his heart has been enlarged the bible said your heart shall be enlarged and flow together that will become somebody's experience now in the name of jesus that from this day everything you see in this world every prophetic package that is spoken concerning you your heart will catch it by faith somebody believe it say louder amen I said somebody believe it say louder amen. amen that when God says something like in 2016 there shall be four quantum lips you will not reduce it to minor lips but your heart will be large enough to accommodate quantum lips and you see it delivered supernaturally 
that even in the month of August, if you have not seen one yet, your heart is not about to shake because the spirit of faith is working therein to procure your own portion. You will not miss your portion in the name of Jesus. So the spirit of faith believes all things and all things are possible to him that believeth. I see all things being delivered supernaturally to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number three, the spirit of faith drives us in the direction of what we believe. It drives us. Mark chapter 1 verse 12. And the spirit driveth him. Driveth him. The Holy Ghost operating as the spirit of faith drives us in the direction of what we believe. It drives us. He moves us we act in faith we move in faith we are not only speaking in faith but we are moving in faith the Bible said concerning the man called Noah he said in Hebrews 11 and verse 7 he said by faith Noah moved F faith is a mover the spirit of faith is a mover by faith Noah moved by faith Noah moved I see the spirit of faith moving each one of us in the direction of that which we desire in the name of Jesus Christ when a man believes a thing and the spirit of faith comes upon him the spirit of faith drives him I see that becoming our experience in Jesus precious name so we have the spirit of power we have the spirit of faith and we have seen the manifestations of that and we also have number three the spirit of knowledge or call it also the spirit of revelation the spirit of knowledge or the spirit of revelation in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 and verse 18 that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and verse 19 he said and to know what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us what who believe according to the working of his mighty power what is God showing us there the spirit of knowledge opens us up to the realms of revelation it opens us up to the realm of spiritual understanding colossians 1 and verse 9 he said that we are praying for you that god will allow that we, we desire that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding the word of god cannot be naturally discerned the bible tells us that in first corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 he said the things of the spirit cannot be discerned you can't naturally discern them but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of god for they are foolishness unto him neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned somebody went into you know a board meeting thinking it was a swearing in ceremony and suddenly like we heard in the testimony we began to see occultic you know materials coming out people cutting their finger bleeding into a bowl and suddenly he said I remember I had my mantle you cannot spiritual you cannot naturally discern that that handkerchief that a person is holding carries enough power to burn down a building and then suddenly he said as I took out the mantle a wind from the Lord took the mantle from my hand and placed it upon the calabash and any time higher power meets lesser power the lesser power must bow when the calabash felt the mantle of power rest upon it it caught fire not only did it catch fire the building inside which they were also caught fire meeting was concluded by the fire of heaven you cannot naturally descend that you can't naturally descend that it looks ordinary he was putting it in his pocket no harm he put it inside his pocket his coat didn't catch fire but the power of god is specific in his nature it only ignites when it reaches his target it only ignites when it reaches his target it is spiritually discerned it is spiritually discerned it is spiritually discerned so it is the spirit of god that opens us up to revelation and that revelation allows us to operate in a realm of dominion 
quickly what is understanding let's describe it what is understanding if the spirit of knowledge helps us to gain spiritual understanding then what is understanding number one it is being able to see what god is saying being able to see what god is saying that scripture said in ephesians 1 and verse 18 the eyes of your understanding coming to the point where i see i see i see i see what god is saying where your eyes open and you begin to realize the reality of the promises and packages of redemption where your eyes open and you begin to see the reality of where you stand in christ for example the spirit of revelation coming upon a person in a season like this particularly on a day like this on the covenant day of vengeance you begin to see that you are not created to be harassed you are not designed to be tormented you are not you are not redeemed to be afflicted suddenly it dawns upon you this is not right i cannot be harassed like this the devil cannot keep tormenting me like this i cannot continue under this oppression i'm not redeemed to be oppressed i'm redeemed to be set free for he who the son sets free is free indeed when that revelation dawns upon you then it begins to open you up to what is next what is my provision for liberty and then you begin to see no i can say to a mountain be removed and be cast to the sea and if i doubt not in my heart i will have whatsoever i will whatever whatsoever i say you can also begin to see that no weapon formed against me shall prosper and every tongue that rise up against me in judgment i am the one to sentence them and condemn them therefore in the name of jesus you harassment you oppression you torment i decree you judge and sentence that's what revelation does it opens you up to see to see to see who you are to see where you stand shout hallelujah we discover that the ultimate ministry of the holy spirit is to quicken our spiritual understanding in the book of isaiah chapter 11 verse 1 to 3 we are introduced to the seven spirits of god and the Bible shows us that the purpose of the oppression is summarized in verse 3. He said, and shall make him of a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, nor reprove after the hearing of his ears. From today, I see the oppression of the spirit of understanding manifesting practically in your life in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Nothing empowers like knowledge. And nothing transforms like revelation nothing empowers like knowledge and nothing transforms like revelation God is so deep that only shallow men think they know enough of him settle down there is more to discover in this great God Romans 11 33 all the depths both of the knowledge and of the wisdom of God how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out humble yourself under the mighty hand of god and he will exalt you allow the holy ghost through the spirit of knowledge to unpack and unveil to you the packages of redemption and watch out you are in for an adventure of a lifetime i see that becoming your experience in the name of jesus christ may those three ministries of the holy spirit the spirit of power, the spirit of faith, and the spirit of knowledge find full expression in your life from today. Today is our covenant day of vengeance. In Isaiah chapter 61, 63, sorry, and verse 4. The Bible says there, For the day of vengeance is in my heart. Why? Because the year of my redeemed is come. I have good news for you. This year, 2016, is your year. But there are forces that want to confront the happenings. And that is why God said, The day of vengeance is in my heart. In order to find the full execution of the year of the redeemed. The day of vengeance. And God has announced through his servant, because the Lord will do nothing except to show it to his servant, first the prophet. He has announced through his servant that today is our covenant day of vengeance. It is that day that God kept in his heart that there must be an address to everything that is confronting you. 
I don't know what it is that is confronting you, confronting your destiny, confronting your family, confronting your marriage, confronting your children, confronting everything around you. But today, on this day of vengeance, it shall be silenced in the name of Jesus. The way of God is clearly shown in scriptures. Look at what he said. The day of vengeance is in my heart. The year of the redeemed is come. I have a whole year full of blessing, but in one day I will silence all oppositions. This day, the 7th of August, whatever is confronting you shall be silenced. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. amen. And somebody may say, Why is it? Why are we talking about vengeance? Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 11. He said, Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. He said, Therefore, the hearts of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Because there is no quick and speedy sentence. He said the heart of the son of man is set in them to do evil if you don't discipline the wicked the wickedness will multiply what is a day of vengeance like this all about discipline the wicked teach principalities lessons he said for god the god of peace will bruise satan under your feet shortly therefore today Every agent of the devil seeking your downfall, every gang up of the wicked, we decree the lightness of God striking against them. Because sentence is not speedy, therefore their heart is set in them to do evil. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 45 and verse 5, it said, Thine arrows, O God, are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies whereby the people fall on that day the arrows of god will pierce the heart of the enemies of the saint today in the name of the lord jesus christ this is very important for the prophetic package of the year to be fully released there must be a full-scale confrontation second second timothy chapter first timothy chapter 1 and verse 18 the bible says he said this prophet he said this charge i commit unto thee son timothy according to the prophecies that went upon thee that thou mightest war fight war against everything standing against the prophetic he said that thou mightest war a good warfare a good warfare the year is tagged glory to glory anything that is against the package of glory today is the day of their own defeat somebody believe me say louder amen anything that is mocking anyone's destiny today the cause of the lord shall rest upon it psalm chapter 35 and verse 6 psalm 35 and verse 6 he said let their way be dark and slippery let the angel of the lord persecute them everything and everyone that is against the saints their way shall be dark and slippery we deploy the angels of god to persecute them now in psalm chapter 7 verse 9 down to verse 13 we find this picture he said oh let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end but establish the just for the righteous god try the hearts and the reins he said my defense is of god which saved the upright in heart he said god judged the righteous and god is angry with the wicked every day he said in verse 12 he said if he turn not he will wet his sword he will bend his bow he will make it ready look at verse 13 he has also prepared for him the instruments of death he has ordained his arrows against the persecutors today this covenant day of vengeance the sword of the lord the arrows of the lord the angels of the lord are deployed against your enemies somebody believe it say louder amen every 
weapon with God. He said he has wet his sword. He has bent his bow. Are you hearing? That is Jehovah. The one that is called the God of war. He said, I'm not sending somebody to fight this fight. I have bent my own bow. I have sharpened my own sword. And my angel is already before me. I have made their way dark and slippery. Today, the final sentence against every adversary is issued on your behalf. Now hear this. As the redeemed of God, you have a right to curse the adversary. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 149, verse 9 and verse 10, it said there, it said, concerning the redeemed, Isaiah, Psalm 149, verse 9 and 10, to execute upon them. We have just read some judgments. It said to execute upon them the judgments that are written. This honor have how many sins? Oh, so me, that includes me. Again, say louder, that includes me. One more time, say louder, that includes me. Whatever is confronting your redemptive right today, you will assault them as you speak. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 15 to 17. The Bible said, but they shall surely gather, but not by me. He said, and whosoever shall gather together against thee, they shall fall for thy sake. Why? He said in verse 16, Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. I have created also the west waster to destroy. And I am the God who is guaranteeing you that no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. And I've also said that every tongue that rises up against thee in judgment, he said, you now condemn them. Say with me, against that enemy, I condemn you. That assault of destiny, look at it in the face and say, I condemn you. Today, that judgment shall be executed. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. I said, somebody believe it, say loud, amen. What a joy you have come today also to this prophetic platform. Because prophets are agents of vengeance. They are agents of vengeance. You look all through the scriptures. You see them manifesting their vengeance ministry. Look at a man like Moses carrying the children of Israel out of Egypt. And suddenly the wicked Pharaoh arose. And Moses became the instrument of the burial of that army. Today we have a prophet in our midst. And there will be prophetic decrees coming forth on your behalf every pharaoh of destiny shall be swallowed in the red sea vengeance on what let's address it quickly number one vengeance on captivity anything holding you against your will today vengeance is coming against it exodus chapter 12 and verse 12 he said i will pass through the land this night he said, and I will smite all the firstborn of the land of, of Egypt, and both of men on, and beasts, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. So whatever is holding you captive, today God has determined that he is coming down to smite against it. Number two, vengeance against reproach. Vengeance against reproach. Vengeance against reproach. Isaiah 37 verse 15 to 38 the Bible tells us there one king arose and stood against the nation of Judah and began to defy them and began to reproach them but suddenly as Ezekiah cried to the Lord the Lord rose up and then one of his angels came forth and 185,000 of them were smote in one day whatever is trying to mock your Christianity mock your destiny today is the day of final vengeance Finally, number three, vengeance against satanic barriers. Acts chapter 13, verse 1 to 12. The Bible tells us there, Paul the apostle and, and, and Barnabas went forth and they were ministering and the Bible said that one man withstood them seeking to turn the deputy from the faith and 
and Paul filled with the Holy Ghost said thou full of subtlety thou child of the devil the hand of God is against thee whatever is trying to resist you today vengeance shall be executed against it the good news is this this very day that assaulter is silenced lift your hand to heaven and give God thanks father I thank you blessed be your holy name in the precious name of the Lord Jesus we have prayed take your seat for a moment quickly before the prophetic word begins to come forth if you are here you are not born again maybe you gave your life to Jesus before but you are not connected anymore this is your opportunity get it right you have come today on this great day there are blessings are waiting all those who are genuinely the children of God you are here you're not born again or you say pastor I don't even know whether I'm born again or not then you are not today God wants you to have the assurance of salvation quickly rise on your feet if you're in that category I want to be born again I want to become a child of God I want to be part of the family of God quickly rise on your feet all over this place rise on your feet don't let anything or anyone discourage you or hold you down rise on your feet now quickly all over this place also you are here this morning and you need to rededicate your life to Jesus you have disconnected you need a new beginning quickly also rise on your feet Jesus is set to receive you again he wants to restore you again quickly rise on your feet in that category I need to rededicate my life to Jesus I need a new beginning quickly rise on your feet if you have done that in any of the two calls make your way to the aisle closest to you officials please help them stand in the aisle I'll be praying for you from there and then a new beginning dawns upon you quickly get into the aisle closest to you and I'll pray for you from there praise God praise God praise God officials please help them quickly begin to make your way begin to make your way to the aisle Jesus is Lord everyone please suspend filling your form right now and lift up your right hand to heaven and say this prayer of faith after me from the depth of your heart say after me Lord Jesus I come to you today I know that I'm a sinner but I know that you died for me and on the third day you rose again Jesus come into my life be my Lord and Savior take control of me from this day forward now I know that I am born again Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray for you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Let the grace that has brought these precious ones keep them in you all the days of their life. No going back, no turning back. Grace to run this race profitably. Release it upon them. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. You are blessed. Please complete your forms, return them to the officials, and be blessed as you do so. Please stand on your feet right now as we receive God's servant for prophetic seal upon all that we have received. Give Jesus a hand of praise. It's worthy. It's worthy. It's worthy. Make that hand bigger for the Lord. Bigger for the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This week you are going to hear news yeah. that the forces resisting your advancement are no more. Yeah. You shall hear news yeah. that the devil and all his agents militating against your fulfillment of destiny are no more. He said, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Exodus 22 and verse 18. Every force of darkness bewitching your destiny, they are cut short today. They are cut down today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Give the Lord the big hand of praise. And please be seated for a moment. Very shortly, 
we'll be issuing prophetic verdicts that will culminate in testimonies of vengeance this week. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Jesus said, Occupy till I come. Getting occupied is the gateway to unending enlargement, unending advancement, ever forward moving. Because in all labor, there is profit. So every opportunity to invest more in stewardship is an op opportunity to greater advancement of our destinies. Well, we have four phases of the one that prophetic agenda for the year. We are done with the first two. And we are now in the third one for the year, which is the fifth in the series of the one that prophetic agenda. And it's my privilege this morning, as directed by the Holy Ghost, to declare the core operation for this fifth phase, and it is Operation Bring Many. Amen. Amen. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many, many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. It is many that qualifies the stars in us to rise. It's bringing many that qualifies our stars to shine. And they that turn men, not just bring, they see them established in the faith and in the church and in the truth. Then they're qualified to shine as stars forever and ever. What is many? Wherever two or three are gathered together in my name, I mean they missed two and three counted and numbered out of the mouth of two or three witnesses every two shall be established two or three are numbered that connotes that many begins with four many begins with what therefore in the name of the lord jesus christ beginning from tomorrow may i mean august the 8th all through to 18th of september every engaging member of this church is by this operation expected to deliver minimum four standing souls in operation bring many and as you get engaged with this group expect your star to break forth. Yes, you have been working. And then you ask yourself, but what am I saying? It is the cumulative effect of your engagement that results in your ultimate testimony. It's not the last throw of the sledgehammer that brings the stone wall down. It is a cumulative effect of the series of throws on the stone wall that brings it down. The trust in this phase, and particularly in this operation, will bring the stone wall of barrier down in your life and shall go straight before you into your possession. And the wall of Jericho came down flat. They went around it six days, once per day, on the seventh day, seven times a day, and with a great shout, and the wall came down. The first round on the first day, something happened. Although nobody could see it. Second day, something has happened, but nobody could see it. Third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day. The war was still standing. What is happening? 
Then first round on the seventh day, no motion. Second, third, fourth, fifth. And by the seventh one, and with a shout as commanded, the wall of Jericho fell down flat. And everyone went straight before them and they took the city. Everyone went straight before them and they took the city. It is the cumulative effect of our engagement that results in our automatic supernatural, results in our ultimate supernatural advancement. So get excited because this operation will change your story forever. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Don't walk around weary people. They can wear you out. What are we doing? What are we doing? Don't walk around weary people. They can wear you out. Can I tell you the good news? We had prayed one whole month. The fruits have not just overripe. They have dropped. All we are doing is to pick the fruits. You are going to pick plenty. You'll be surprised at your picking rate. I just got for my sons right now. We went out yesterday and got 63 souls. And guess what? 30 of them have shown up in the first and second service. 30, 30, 30. And let me tell you what the arrangement is like. Every time I go out with my team, I take 50% of the souls and divide the 50% over the remaining people. Amen. Praise God. Because we are all part of the operation. Yes, they drive me, yet they are there to write the list of the names of those who are saved, and they are there to provide whatever we need as security. Each of them have their share of the deal. Can I hear your amen? I said we went out and we got 63 souls in one sweep, under one hour. If your heart is in it, it's no big deal. But by the time you hear the instruction and you scorn it, what about? What are we actually after? Where are we going to put them? Who is giving you the burden? Who has given you the assignment? To find out where to put them. This church has capacity to run seven services. What's your problem? It's not enough to engage, but engage with excitement. If you are not excited, your engagement is in futility. Engage with excitement. Engage with excitement. I've been doing this since 1969. A member of this church said I gave him the first tract in his life in 1969 July. The first tract in his life, 1969 July. He's a member of this church. The children are also here. 1969. You just started. Why are you looking tired? What have you done? What have you done? Can you imagine me jumping 69 to date? Can one buy that? I, I, I will be that. I don't care who that person is. The people that work my hours per day can be counted on fingertips. That work my number of hours per day. Not a year work that you go to work and you're not doing anything or watching television or reading paper. Real, real solid investment. Yet I could step out. Hunting for the lost. Now listen to me. Your minimum four is a must. And I'm instructing you. It's not that I'm not advising you. I'm not admonishing you. Amen. I'm an apostle by the grace of God. I'm speaking on God's behalf into your destiny. It's not about people. We are on a rescue mission. What are we on? I told those fellows yesterday in my outreach. I said, look. We are not after people. Don't you see people running into Kenan land in droves? We are after the rescue of the dying. Some who have only two hours more to live and the witch will eat them up. We are out to rescue them from darkness into light. I'm not out this Saturday evening looking for who to add to church. The church is huge. God has added a lot to, that, to us. But your soul needs to be rescued. So please be rescue conscious. Rescue. Rescue conscious. Somebody was about to commit suicide. Jesus met him and rescued his life from death. We have had two of them. That's what we are on. And what more? Everything about your life and destiny is tied to it. Because obedience to God's instructions is the only guarantee for your change of position. It's the only guarantee for your change 
of position. Everybody's position in this church must experience notable changes this year. So the next five weeks is your season of opportunity to make the most of your life. And let me say this as I close. Whosoever has my commandment and keepeth it is the one that loves me. And he that loves me will love my father and I will love him and I will manifest myself to him. I will show up anytime tea on his behalf and in his favor. In the day when he's confronted, I will show up as the God of vengeance to rescue him. And when we walk in love, we are filled with the fullness of God. Becoming untouchable, unharassable, unmolestable, unenchantable, free forever. That's what we get from it. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, grace to make the most of operation, bring many. Receive it right now. The next 40 years of your life, if Jesus tallies, you'll be bouncing about in glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Prophets are ordained as agents of vengeance. Today, any prophetic word released in your direction will be delivered with speed. Everything haunting your destiny will be turned to a testimony. Every agent of the devil after your destiny will pay for it with their own life. Any force that has vowed that you will not be married will go down for you and you shall be gloriously married. Whatever may be resisting any aspect of your destiny, Today, they are caught down in your favor. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Israel is my son, even my firstborn, and let my son go that he may serve me. But if thou refuse to let him go, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn, because I must free my son. Anyone that enters into a covenant to serve God, God has entered into a covenant to manifest himself as the God of vengeance in his favor. Therefore, today, this is a church of committed servants of God. People do with all their heart whatever thing they are asked to do. In the service units, they are serving selflessly. In the cell system, they are serving selflessly. In so many, in engaging with the prayer altar, they are tireless. Therefore, whatever won't let you go, goes down for you today. Every force bewitching your destiny is cut short today. In the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. Anyone who may have said concerning you, concerning any good in your life, that not, not, not over his dead body, I decree that he goes down for God's hand to be made manifest. Your miracle children are released today by vengeance. Your miracle marriage is released today by vengeance. Your business is released from captivity today. Your children are released from captivity today. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' name. Ushers, would you make available this material if it's not done yet? Have you all received? Have you all received it? Now, lift it up. Lift that up. Say with me, my star is tied 
to how much I engage in this operation. Both on the prayer altar and in reaching out to the lost. And in ensuring that not less than four standing souls is brought into the kingdom within these five weeks to the glory of God. Four souls rescued from the dungeon of darkness to serve the living God. I receive that grace now to bring this into effect in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, I said this, and not jokingly. If you are not going to read this today, please surrender it. Put it on your seat in case you can't give it to anybody else. Please, if you won't read it, don't take it. God has waste. You also have the prophetic word focus for the month. Go ahead with that. Every prophetic word released in your direction is turned to a testimony in your hand today. Your miracle job that has been withheld by the devil is released right now. Your miracle marriage being resisted by the wicked one is opened up right now. Your marital settlement being contested by the wickedness of the wicked is rescued finally today. The same way that evil woman was slaughtered by the power of God who killed three sons of his three sons of his tenant of her tenant three three sons the same way God caught her down in anger everything tormenting your life is caught down in the wrath of God so shall it be Whatever force has not succeeded to stagnate this commission will never be able to stop your way forward. Go in peace. If you are looking out for four in five weeks, why not look for two this Sunday? Get two the Sunday after and nurture them the next three weeks. That's the way to work. I'm on my way again this week. And I'm not just going to see them saved. I want to see them preserved by bringing them to the storehouse. See them preserved by bringing them to the storehouse. Marketing to them next Sunday. It's another covenant day. Can I hear your amen? amen? Of career breakthrough. And you bring your career and business point of contact and prophetic blessings are released on it and a new day opens on it. Market everything God is doing here with all excitement. In the name of Jesus, no one will end this season without a story to tell. Yeah. Lift up those two hands. Go in peace. Yeah. Return with your vengeance order of testimony. The forces against you and your family are caught down today. The forces against your destiny are brought down today. God has vowed to avenge of your adversaries. And this week, return with your vengeance order of testimony. And so shall it be. Now, together, let's share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship, surely. God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall do in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.